Hello, my name's Dirk McElliott. I'm an extension specialist working for the South African Sugarcane Research Institute. And today we're going to be demonstrating a knapsack fertilizer applicator used for sugarcane purposes. As a farmer, you would know that fertilizer is one of your most expensive and also one of your most essential inputs for the production of sugarcane. In other words, you need to get it right the first time. The grower has to take a soil sample of the field that he wishes to fertilize. He sends that soil sample through to the fertilizer advisory services based here at Mount Edgecombe. And then the grower will receive a report on exactly what fertilizer blends he needs to apply on his fields and at what rate. Let's get on to our knapsack fertilizer applicator. As you can see, it's quite a large apparatus. This holds about 25 kilograms of fertilizer at one time. This knapsack is made out of plastic, but you do get other versions made out of a nylon or material, more of a sack type of version. You can see it sits quite nicely on the back of your laborer. There are two shoulder pads. What you can do is put some form of cushioning on it to make it more comfortable for the applicator. It's important that the applicator sits nicely on the shoulders of the, of the laborer. It should sit above the hip of the laborer as you can imagine, they're carrying 25 kgs at a time and it could become uncomfortable if it's sitting too low. Um, one of the accessories to the knapsack is your outlet tube. Okay, and at the end of the outlet tube is your calibration nozzle. And on that calibration nozzle, you've got the sliding gauge. It has two nuts on it and you adjust those nuts with an Allen key. While the applicator is walking through the field, he'll have his outlet tube based parallel to his hip. Hold it. Okay, and he'll walk through the field and the fertilizer will be gravity fed from the knapsack through the tube and out the end there. What is also important that is when you put the fertilizer into the knapsack, that there are no clods of fertilizer because you want your fertilizer to flow through the tube without having any blockages. You'll also notice that your laborer will have the correct protective clothing on. As you can see there, he's also got his face mask um, and he will also have a pair of gum boots on. Before we do the calibration, there are other pieces of equipment that we will require to ensure that we do it correctly. Obviously, we need the knapsack with the calibration nozzle. You can either use a measuring wheel or you can use a tape measure but make sure that the tape measure is at least 50 to 100 meters in length. You'll require a stopwatch, a calculator, We're going to take a break to show you a simple fertilizer calculation that you need to be able to do in order to complete the calibration of the knapsack. Now what this calculation does is that it works out the distance that a specific amount of fertilizer must cover in order to comply with the recommended rate per hectare. For purposes of this exercise, let's assume that the fertilizer recommendation is for the application of urea at 300 kilograms per hectare. The first step is to choose the container that you will use for the calibration. We've decided to use this 5 litre bucket. The important thing is that you don't have to know that it's 5 litres and it doesn't have to be 5 litres. It can be a container of any size. The calculation will still work. In this case, size does not matter. Step 2 is to find out the net mass of fertiliser in the container. You do this simply by weighing the empty container then fill the container with fertilizer and weigh it again, and then find out 
the difference between these two masses. So the net mass in our case is the 4 kilograms of the container filled with fertilizer minus the 0.1 kilograms of the empty container giving us 3.9 kilograms. Next, I would need to take into account my row spacing. Now you should know your row spacing, but if you don't, it's quite easy to calculate. Say this is my field, and these are my cane rows. The row spacing is simply the distance from the center of one cane row to the center of the next cane row. In my example, the row spacing we're going to be using is 1.2 meters. Step 4 is to calculate the total row length per hectare. Now, what we mean by this is, if that again is my field and those are my cane rows, I want to calculate the total distance per hectare that the recommended amount of fertilizer must be applied over. And we do this by taking the area and dividing it by row spacing. Area in this case is area of an hectare, which we know to be 10,000 square meters, divided by 1.2 meters, giving me 8,333 meters. The next part of the calculation works out how much of fertilizer we need to apply per meter. And we do this by taking the recommended fertilizer rate per meter and dividing it by the total row length. In our example, we were asked to apply 300 kilograms per hectare. And we divide that by the row length of 8,333 meters, giving us 0 0.036 kilograms per meter. So, just stay with me for a moment. We're almost done with the calculations. We're finally going to be working out the distance that each container of fertilizer must cover. And we do that by taking the net mass of fertilizer per container and dividing it by the fertilizer per meter. In our case, that works out to 109 meters. What this means is that this bucket of fertilizer needs to cover 109 meters. By now your poor brain is probably quite frazzled and you're thinking that you're never going to remember all those steps. But don't panic, we've got a handout for you with all the steps and the explanations written down. But what's even better is we've designed this handy Excel spreadsheet application which you can obtain from us and it's so easy. All you've got to do is type in the recommended rate of application, the net mass of fertilizer per container, your row spacing, and the spreadsheet will work out the distance in meters that each container of fertilizer must cover. There's even a useful help section with examples and guidelines. So now that we know that each bucket of fertilizer must cover 109 meters, let's go back to the field and complete the calibration of the knapsack. Now we know that we need to apply 5 litres of urea over a distance of 109 metres. So we're going to use the measuring wheel to physically go and measure 109 metres in the field. To calibrate 300 kilograms of urea per hectare, we're now sitting at point number seven. We need to measure out an exact distance of 109 meters, and then we need to get our laborer to walk that distance of 109 meters, and we need to record how long it takes for him to walk that distance. It's important that he has a full knapsack of fertilizer, 25 kilograms. Okay, he must walk at a constant speed, and he must also walk as though he was actually applying the fertilizer in the field. What you can do is ensure that when he's in the field, you're not going to release any fertilizer. You can either close off the outlet nozzle at the end, or you can just walk with it horizontally to his body, so no fertilizer flows out. Here we have a 50 kilogram bag of urea. We need to open it up, and we need to fill the knapsack with approximately 25 kilograms. 
For accurate timing, I'm going to ask our applicator to walk a distance of 109 meters in the one direction and I'll time him with my stopwatch. Then I'll tell him to return on the same route that he's just walked for another 109 meters. In other words, I'll have two recordings and I'll get the average of those two recordings. Okay, we've noticed that our time to walk 109 meters has taken 135 seconds. So in other words, we need to fill five liters in the time allotted of 135 seconds. So let's physically do that by adjusting our calibration nozzle with our little Allen key. If our five litre bucket isn't full in the time allotted, in other words, in 135 seconds, that's telling me that the fertiliser is not flowing quick enough and our aperture in our calibration nozzle isn't open enough. So we'd have to reopen that nozzle slightly to allow it to fill up within the allotted time. So let's start. You can shake it a bit because if you're in the field, you will be shaking your outlet tube. Get ready to stop. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we've hardly filled this bucket up in our allotted time of 135 seconds. That tells me that the fertilizer isn't flowing quick enough and our aperture isn't wide enough yet. So we need to re-loosen our nuts with the Allen key and open up that aperture to let, allow it to flow a lot quicker. We're making the aperture bigger. Okay, I've now opened up the aperture and I've tightened up the bolts with the Allen key. And we can now try and recalibrate the nozzle. As you can see, we've filled the 5 litre bucket within the allotted time of 135 seconds. Our calibration nozzle is now correctly calibrated. We should be tightening our bolts and recording the actual settings on our nozzle. So next time you go out and you want to apply 300 kilograms of urea per hectare, these will be your settings that you'll use on your calibration nozzle. If you're applying urea based blends, one should have this extra attachment that you can attach at the end of your calibration nozzle. Now what this does, it allows the fertilizer that comes out of this tube to be spread more evenly. So in other words, you're not banding your fertilizer in a band, you're actually broadcasting your fertilizer over a width of approximately 40 centimeters. Now this will reduce the amount of volatilization that could take place when applying a urea-based blend. Once your laborer has finished or completed one of his knapsacks, the ideal way to refill it is for him to go back to the trailer. Preferably, he mustn't take the knapsack off, okay, because that adds to wear and tear and time. So you should have one or two units on the back of the trailer refilling those knapsacks for the laborer. There are other methods that one can use. Sometimes a grower will have a fertilizer hopper on the back of a trailer, but you must ensure that that hopper is higher than the guy standing with the knapsack. At the end of the day, once the laborer have finished their task in the field, it's important to wash out all the knapsacks and hang them up. It's also vitally important that they dry by the next day because you don't want to put fertilizer into a wet knapsack because that will cause porridging or sludging of the fertilizer and then it won't flow freely through that pipe when you actually want to apply the fertilizer again the following day. If you follow the guidelines demonstrated in this video today, you'll be starting off with taking a soil sample, you'll know exactly what blends to apply, at what rate, you'll also be calibrating the knapsack fertilizer applicator correctly, which will now allow for efficient fertilizing of your fields, and finally resulting in optimal yields.